Well, I think that one thing that we have to be clear about is when we're talking about surgical treatment, uh, we're talking about severe obesity and not sort of the run-of-the-mill obesity, you know, 10 or 20 pounds overweight. This is a treatment option for people who are severely obese. And the way that we characterize and define the severity of obesity is by looking at a number called the BMI or body mass index. That's a number that's calculated by combining an individual's height and weight into a formula and it gives a fairly reasonable estimate of how much extra fat tissue a person has for their height. So a normal BMI is between 20 and 25. A person is considered obese with a BMI of greater than 30. But we don't talk about surgical treatment of obesity unless the BMI is 40 or higher or if it's somewhere between 35 and 40. Uh, if that person also has other significant obesity related medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, high cholesterol, and so forth. Um, patients also need to have had other attempts at weight loss before considering surgery. Um, there's no question that surgery is the most effective treatment for severe obesity, but it shouldn't be your first treatment. Because at the end of the day, in order to do well after surgery, you need to be knowledgeable about nutrition. You need to know how to read food labels so that you can make good selections after you have the operation to have the best outcome possible. Now, what makes somebody a good candidate for a <clears throat> surgical option? So, um, you know, I think one thing that's important is that the person is knowledgeable about nutrition. And so uh, we do require that patients have... Uh, had education and counseling either with their primary care physician or uh, dietitian or even some of the commercial weight loss programs that are available uh, things like Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers and so forth because having that background knowledge of nutrition is going to be critical after surgery to make uh, good choices and understanding what foods have protein in them which have a lot of carbohydrates that you might want to avoid fat measurements and so forth. Um, in addition to that um, there are the BMI criteria that we look for specifically uh, in terms of the severity of obesity the BMI should be greater than 40 or somewhere between 35 and 40 if the person has other significant uh, obesity related uh, medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and sleep apnea. The other thing that's uh, uh, very important and part of our evaluation uh, is to try to get an assessment of the patient's comprehension and understanding of the the changes that are necessary after surgery in terms of the diet and exercise and the follow-up that's required as well as the support system that the individual has in place uh, at home and and so forth because the support that the individual has around them does play a big role in terms of how uh, well they do with the operation and uh, in an effort to better assess that uh, we have our patients evaluated by psychologists as well as dietitians uh, during the initial evaluation process and then we meet as a team uh, and decide together whether we feel that somebody is a good candidate uh, for bariatric surgery or not. Now there are multiple surgical procedures now that can can be used. How, how is the right <coughs> procedure matched with a, a, a new patient? Yeah, it's, uh, it's an evolving area in terms of the application of the various surgical options that are currently available for the treatment of severe obesity. Uh, we're one of the only centers uh, uh, in the Midwest and even nationally that actually does all of the different operations uh, for severe obesity. Uh, we do the Ruin Y gastric bypass, we do the vertical sleeve gastrectomy, we do adjustable gastric banding procedures, and we also do the duodenal switch operation. Uh, we do all of these operations uh, laparoscopically. Uh, it's very unusual to have to convert to an open operation. And so when we offer all these different options, one of the, the big challenges is to try to uh, come up with a, a rational and evidence-based uh, method by which to provide a patient uh, with a recommendation as to which operation uh, we feel that would uh, provide them with the best opportunity for significant and sustained weight loss and improvement in their medical conditions that are obesity related as well as the quality of life and the durability of the results. So each operation has relative pros and cons to it. Um, if there was one operation that was best for all people in all circumstances, believe me, it would make our lives simpler and uh, that's the one that we'd be doing. But at the end of the day, um, there is not a single operation and so we have to take several different things into account. 
Uh, first of all, we have to assess what the severity of the obesity is. You know, the, an operation that results in an 80 pound weight loss may be terrific for somebody who's 100 pounds overweight. Uh, but if that person weighs 500 pounds and they lose 80 pounds, it's better than being 500 pounds, but that still leaves them at 420 pounds. And so the individuals who are at the higher degree of severe obesity really need a more effective and more powerful tool to get them to where they, they should be. Also, uh, there's uh, evidence that suggests that certain medical conditions are better treated by some of the uh, operations than some of the other operations. For example, when it comes to um, diabetes, the duodenal switch and the gastric bypass appear to be uh, more effective than the lap band and probably more effective than the sleeve gastrectomy. So you know, many of our patients, uh, nearly a third of them, have diabetes preoperatively. And so that's a very important consideration because uh, many patients who have diabetes after these operations can actually end up coming off of their diabetes medications and have normal blood sugars, which is a very uh, gratifying result. Ultimately, all of these operations are tools to help people to lose weight. They're not cures, and like any kind of tool, number one, it needs to be used properly in order to be effective. Um, the individual needs to feel comfortable with the tool, so we're not going to recommend or hand a person a sledgehammer if they can't pick it up and, and use it right. And like any kind of tool, it can be dangerous to the individual if it's not used properly. So all of these different uh, uh, factors uh, come into play when uh, providing a patient with a recommendation uh, for which operation they should have. And I think that one of the strengths of our program is that by offering all the different options, uh, you know, I don't have a vested interest in directing somebody towards one operation that we do or away from an operation that we don't do. Instead, what we're really focused on is really trying to get the best outcomes possible in terms of weight loss, treatment of the medical conditions, and overall quality of life. And, and having the experience doing all the different options uh, really uh, gives us the opportunity to provide that for our patients.